All right, guys, so I'm back with an Ask Ruby question, and this one is so good that I couldn't wait to actually dive into it. Um, so this one talks about using discernment in your friendships, right? Discerning who is for you and who is not for you, and how do you walk with someone that constantly offends you or is seeking to really hurt you and run your name through the mud, but you're being a friend to them? Listen, offenses will come, the Bible says, but it is to our glory to overlook an offense. But one thing we have to understand too, is that while love covers a multitude of sins, the Bible also teaches us to what? To guard our heart. And so we have to pray for discernment that the Lord will teach us what to do with the discernment when he shows us who people really are. How do you want us to walk with this person? Is it from a distance? Is it up close? Do I need to separate? God will order your steps and give you the answers. He will even show you who people are if you pray about it, right? Um, so one thing I would first say is this, ask the Lord to examine your heart to see what is in it. And then ask for him to show you how he would want you to move forward with this individual, this friendship. Because just because you all don't see eye to eye doesn't make that person wrong. You know, Peter and Paul did not agree on everything. It is a mockery of Jesus' teaching. It is the law that believers must be circumcised. Believers in the law? You're abandoning the law? When Gentiles, who do not possess the law, do instinctively what the law requires, they are the law unto themselves. What the law requires is written on their hearts. Many who follow Jesus believe that they must accept the law also. Christ is the end of the law. And I think that's a mistake that sometimes we make. Oh, we're in the body of Christ. Then, you know, we all have to walk together. We all have to be together. No, 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 no. Paul and Peter had to separate because they didn't agree on everything. Maybe there were personality issues, but they found that it was better that they would separate than be together and cause division and strife because you can't be a teacher of the gospel. You cannot be a messenger of the gospel and be a person of quarrelsome strife, right? So they found it better to separate. That's something that has to be something you pray about, right? Also realize this, Jesus had 12 disciples. <laughs> Not all of those disciples were in his closest inner circle. This can represent the church. Some of us are called to work the fields and we are called to share the gospel, but maybe we're not called to friendship, right? And even Judas was among those people that were among the disciples and he betrayed Jesus, but also his betrayal was necessary for Jesus to go to the cross in that room and yet at the same time you have in that same room the disciple that would betray Jesus you're very quiet friend am I this last supper was an incredibly awkward moment for Judas he knows that he's betrayed Jesus but he's not sure if Jesus is aware of this I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat again until the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. Jesus starts talking about his death, and this is confusing to the disciples. Essentially, Jesus is taking a well-known Jewish tradition, the Passover meal, and he's adding to it new meaning. And he's saying, this isn't just the bread that's broken at Passover. This is my body, which is broken for you. This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many. This isn't just the wine that is drunk during Passover. This is my blood, which is shed for you. 
we see this is a point of separation between Judaism and Christianity, where Jews continue to celebrate the Passover and Christians now will celebrate the Eucharist or the Holy Communion. And this becomes one of the essential elements of Christianity. I have no doubt the disciples couldn't take it all in, but they knew it was serious and that it looked like Jesus was headed for a fate they had not anticipated. And the Last Supper becomes all the more somber. One of you will betray me. One who is eating him. Which of us is the traitor, Lord? It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Surely you don't mean me. When Jesus singles out Judas, and hands Judas that piece of bread. That must have been a gut-wrenching feeling for Judas. Do what you have to do. But do it quickly. Gone. So at some point during the meal, Judas was so scared or embarrassed that he just slipped away into the night. Maybe the disciples thought, well, he's going out to do something Jesus wanted him to do. I don't think they, any of them thought that what he's really going to do is go and betray Jesus. Jesus' calling out of Judas shows either one of two things, either his divine knowledge of everything that is going to happen or his simple human intuition. Jesus knows what Judas is going to do because Jesus knows Judas so well. So that there are some people that are in your life that may be real life Judases, but God will show you how to walk with them. God will show you how to keep them at a distance. God will show you how to love them, but not expose them. And I think that's important because Judas, Jesus could have exposed, but he allowed the judgment of the Lord to come from the most high God. He himself did not expose Judas to the disciples. And it's so easy when we get hurt, we wanna tell everybody about our hurts. Um, but Jesus let God be God. Jesus understood that God was the righteous judgment. He was showing us how to walk with difficult people. He was showing us how to walk with people that betray us, right? And how not to hold on to offense. You see, God teaches us so much when we are imitators of God, and that's what we're called to be. So understand that in your friendships, in your fellowship with even other believers, there may be a Judas among you and God will identify them, but he will also show you how to walk with them that doesn't necessarily expose them, but you can love them in grace and keep them at a distance. You know, Judas was not one of the people that went to the inner circle. He didn't, he, he didn't tell them everything, right? That was probably, you know, um, confidential. He knew what to tell Judas. He knew how far to go with Judas, right? And we have to know that and have that discernment. And God will do that. He will make us wise as serpents and gentle as doves. And so with the offense, we just have to pray about it that the Lord purifies our heart and put it at the altar because you don't want offenses to get in the way of your prayer life. And so you want to quickly give those to God because we have to be a people of forgiveness. And when I think about there's nothing anyone can really do to me that God didn't portray us and show such great grace. When he was on the cross, you all, and people were playing dominoes. I love this illustration. <laughs> Y'all hear me say it all the time, but they were playing dominoes, right? They were betting for his clothing. They were mocking him. Like if you are the savior, then get yourself off of the cross. You know, they were just, I mean, he was in agony, excruciating pain.
Father! Father! Forgive them. For they know not what they do. And so we have to get in the practice of doing that and knowing that offenses are going to come, but we're going to return love instead, right? And you can still keep people at a distance and still show the fruits of the spirit and show the love of God and pray and intercede. You don't have to walk closely with people who you know you all are not on the same page and it's going to cause strife. That is not the the. That is not the goal, right? Because the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? And that's something I'm learning too, you all, is that, so when I saw this question, I was like, oh, I really can relate. Um, because how can two walk together unless they agree? If you're all on this page and this tangent and all about this, and I'm trying to stay away from that, then I have to put a boundary because I have to understand, okay, they're not where I am and I'm not where they are and I'm not judging them, but I just, we can't walk together because we don't agree. And so it's better that we separate. And so it's okay to separate, but you do it not from offense, but for love for one another. And I hope that makes sense, right? Because we have to walk in forgiveness. We have to walk in that greater love. We have to be strong in grace. And so when offenses come, just know that that's your opportunity to overlook it. And it's your opportunity to bless someone and release them. You don't have to stay walking hand in hand with them. You can bless and release. And that means you don't have to expose them for the wrong that they did, right? Love covers a multitude of sin. So when you release and let them go, you're not bad mouthing them to everyone that will listen, but you release them with a blessing. And then you are being an imitator of Christ. I hope that was helpful. I just thought that that was an amazing question. Thank you all for sharing your Dear Ruby questions. I cannot wait to continue to proceed and, and answer more of these as I pray and, and get a word from the Lord. But these are just so impactful and helpful because so many people, how many people are going through this with friendships and with fellow believers? And um, it's such a, a, a question that benefits the body of Christ. So if you have a question that you'd like me to uh, tap into and to share what the Lord shares with me based on the word of God, I would love to pray over it first and um, give you counsel about that. So my uh, email address is marilynacosta8 at gmail.com and I'll put it right there so you can see it and also in the description box. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you for another Dear Ruby question. Take care.